Hey geniuses, welcome back. And for those of you who are new, my name is Emma and I'm a third year PhD student at my dream university. I'm gonna tell you guys how I got accepted into three R1 universities with a 2.01 GPA. Well, technically a 1.9 GPA in undergrad. I wasn't supposed to graduate. I was not supposed to graduate at all. But nonetheless, that was back in 2018. I am reaching the halfway point of my PhD program. Now, listen closely, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all like I've been doing for the past 10 years that I've been on YouTube. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. Um, I'm not here to give a miraculous story about how I was valedictorian. Obviously by my title, you can tell I was the laziest you could ever meet. And to this day, I still am lazy, but I am doing much better in my PhD studies as a lazy girl. Mm-hmm, I am. Now there is one condition. Um, for legal purposes and just because I'm getting older and a little bit more aware of how things you say can come back to haunt you, for legal purposes, I will not be mentioning the university that I am at, but you can go back in my other videos. You can see like there's some hints of where I go. Obviously, the state that I'm in, there's really only one school that's known for the state that I'm in. Um, but I will be telling you guys the other two schools that I was accepted into but declined the offer. I just don't want to hear any backlash. My views, my opinions are my own and they do not represent my university. I'm going to keep this clean cut in undergrad. I was lazy. Um, but not only was I lazy, I was isolated. I was, I'm not going to go through the whole story. I was in a university in a city that was just not fit for me. Middle of nowhere, in the country, hours away from home, nothing to do. So on top of me being lazy, I was isolated. I was going through social isolation. I just had imposter syndrome. I didn't have my own friend group. My GPA went to trash. Each semester it was lower and lower and lower and eventually I got to a 1.9 GPA by time by time I was uh, supposed to graduate. Yeah. Let me make one thing clear. Low GPA should not stop you from applying to graduate school. When I was applying to graduate school a month before applications closed, this is before my GPA fell to 1.9. I think at this point I was at a 2.2. Um, I still applied with a 2.2. Knowing that, you know, there's really only one program I could apply to that I might not even get into because my alma mater had requirements just like any other school, GRE requirements, which by the way, let me say this one thing, GRE, writing was above average, reading was average, math was below average. I am nothing special here, honey. But I am delusional. And being delusional will get you far in life. Even being lazy will get you far because I applied a month before and I still got in. So don't let a low GPA stop you. Don't let anybody telling you you don't have any papers, you don't have any experience stop you from trying because you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Well, did some digging online. I looked up master's programs in STEM. Came across some universities, knew I couldn't get into most of them. Like, oh, my GPA is terrible. I'm not gonna get into these schools. And I did this about, I did this about a month before the graduate applications closed, so no thought process at all, no reaching out to professors, no literature reviews, just, you know, I think I want to go to graduate school. Um, I heard that I can do my own research, and that sounds way better than how undergraduate was of making me memorize BS and just testing me based on memorization. I just wasn't here for it. And I just need to get out and be in a new environment, a new academic environment. So what stood out about my application that may have possibly gotten me into my alma mater? Um, well, I, I did a lot of volunteering. I founded my own organization. This is all an undergrad. Um, I had a stellar internship with the state that I did one summer. My recommendations were decent, nothing special. Like I said, you know, I was just getting by in class. I wasn't going to office hours. But that personal statement, oh my gosh, ooh, child. That personal statement, I should have published it. That's probably like one of the best writing pieces I ever made. And what I even wrote on it isn't what I do today. At the time on my personal statement, I said, I want to look into air quality index in hog farms. I don't know that. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm not going to no pig farm. Oh no, do y'all see me? Do y'all see me? Me at a pig farm? Get out of here. I don't do that. So there were other things that made my application stand out. And I'm saying this because there are other people like me out there who don't have a good GPA. It could be because you're lazy like me or just you struggled academically or maybe you went through some obstacles while you were in school. You don't have a great GPA, you should still apply. Because graduate school isn't just about being top of your class. They're preparing you to be a future whatever, future scientist, future psychologist. It's not just about, you know, acing tests. It's about how involved are you in the community. 
What are you doing for the community? What are your plans to do for the community through your anticipated research? If you have an idea in mind, even the smallest idea, like something so small that's like, I don't know what I want to do with this, but I know it wants to be something like this, apply. I get in my master's program, I do phenomenal in my master's program. So my theory of, you know, I just need a different academic environment, I need to be somewhere where I feel accepted, where I feel included, where I feel empowered. I graduated with a 3.9 GPA. That was a, I have nothing terrible to say about my alma mater or about the program in general. So this goes on into my next piece of advice. It's not what you know, but who you know, okay? Something that my mom told me too. My recommendations for undergrad, like I said, were decent, nothing special. You know, Emma's come to class, she does her work. I think she can do masters. I read, I read one of them, it wasn't bad, just, yeah. My recommendations for PhD school, like once I finished my masters and decided I wanna go to PhD school, which by the way, I knew a whole year in advance this time, Instead of a semester, I knew a whole year in advance that I wanted to go to PhD school. My recommendations for PhD school were phenomenal. They are phenomenal. But not only that, I knew a young woman who was in the program that I'm currently in. And I don't want to say it was a referral process, but she put that bug in the ear. Hey, I know this other young woman. I think she's going to apply. Look out for her. And I applied. And to be frank, the first time I applied, um, it was right before COVID, so I did not get in. I applied in 2019 for a 2020 year, didn't get in because COVID messed everything up. And then I applied again in 2020 for a 2021 school year and got into three R1 universities. Now we're getting back on topic to my title. I worked my butt off to talk to so many freak. I have never talked to so many people in my life. People that I never would talk to any other day. I found emails, I found social media uh, profiles back when you know we were in COVID and we were all on Twitter and forming communities on Twitter and Instagram. I found professors and I emailed them, I DM'd them. I said, I'm interested, I wanna do my PhD, can we chat? I probably did about 20, about 20 Zoom interviews with professors from different universities. Some of them were repeating, like the, the advisor that I came under for my dream school was about three meetings before I actually had gotten accepted. Um, a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings. And I made it clear to them, my GRE isn't good, nothing special. My undergrad GPA is trash. I have no publications. Here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna do a separate video on graduate application tips that I feel like helped me, but that was one of them already. Just doing a lot of a lot of Zoom interviews before I even submitted my application. I was, you knew who I was by the time that application came in. You're like, oh, Emily, I talked to her like three times already. Yeah, we, we spoke through email last week. I, I expected her to apply. She just emailed me that she submitted anyway, so I was expecting this. The point is, to sum up how I got into three R1 universities, one of them was UNC Chapel Hill, um, another one was North Carolina State, Third one is obviously where I'm at now, my dream university. How I got into three R1 universities, the 2.1 GPA, and my lazy butt. The point is, just try your best every day. And trying your best looks different for everyone. Trying your best may actually be getting a 4.0 GPA. If so, then kudos to you. Trying my best was trying to figure out, you know what? I am not the best when it comes to testing and memorization but I have science questions that no one has answered that I think is feasible to be answered in my lifetime and I wanna be the one to answer them. I just need some guidance, some you know, some expert guidance to help me really hone in on these questions and people just to help me, help you know, craft me into the scientist that I am right now but the scientist that I'm gonna become five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. So just try your best every day. And like I said earlier, be a little delusional. Send emails. I want to meet for a Zoom call. Can we talk? DMs. Hey, I love that article you wrote. Can we talk? You know, maybe pop up at some offices. Oh, hi. You know, I was just doing the tour. I'm interested in this university. I see you have a poster on this. Can we chat? Do you have a second chat about it? Can we talk a bit? Because the worst thing you're going to hear is no. And with that being said, I'm going to include in my description box some research opportunities, funding opportunities, mentorship opportunities, everything that I used when I was applying to grad school that I took advantage of, I'm going to put in my description box down below for you guys to use for yourself or please share to other emerging scientists. But I'm just honestly tired of the gatekeeping. 
I'm tired of people saying, you know, you need a 4.0 GPA to get into grad school. You can't be a PhD or you can't be a med student unless you have these stats. It's not true. All of it is BS. All of it is BS. There are no rules. Um, a lot of the universities, they just make rules on the fly and the, rule, the rules are never permanent. The rules change every year. One year it's like, oh, you need to have this GRE score. Next year it's like, oh, no, nah, not really. We're just going to waive it. You know, so if these universities and the system can be delusional, why can't we? Worst thing you're going to tell me is no, and I'm just going to apply somewhere else. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I'm going to get in somewhere. My only wish is that six years ago when I was applying to graduate school, I came across a video like my own of another young black brown woman in STEM saying, this is how I got into this program with a low GPA or this is how I got into this program with no publications. Because videos like this are going to really inspire and show future PhD holders and master holders that this stigma of you need this grade or you need this or or another video I'm gonna talk about you need to pay for graduate school which is a, it's not a complete myth but it's not 100% true either I want to debunk all of that I do wish six years ago I came across my own video I'm like oh my gosh look at her she's at her junior university she had 2.01 GPA she wasn't able to graduate but look at her so I'm hoping that this will start a trend I'm hoping that other minorities, other young black men, black women, brown women, brown men, etc, etc, from international, like, make your videos, share your stories, because the system wants so many people to believe that you need A, B, C, X, Y, D, X, Y, Z to get in, and it's not true at all. And all I can do is share my resources. Hopefully you guys will share the resources that I've shared in the description box as well. But that is all I have and I will see you guys in the next video.